Hello, I'm Mark Humes, Dungeon Master for High Rollers, and welcome to another episode in our 10-day countdown to Campaign 2. Launching on July 1st over on twitch.tv forward slash yogscast and twitch.tv forward slash highrollersdnd, you can check out the brand new campaign at 5 p.m. BST GMT, whichever one that is. You might need to use some time converters to figure out exactly when that will be. You can also catch the VODs here on this YouTube channel, so please make sure you like, subscribe, ding that bell, all that good stuff. Follow us on Twitter at High Rollers DND for all the latest announcements and to get all the latest news and all of that good stuff. And I'm very pleased to announce that High Rollers will also be available as an audio podcast. Links to all of these things will be in the description below. But today's video is going to be talking about some of the house rules and different custom rules you're going to see in Erois. This video is going to be a little bit more casual than my previous ones because it's one that I need to kind of describe and talk about a few things including some process rather than just reveal information. One of the big things I wanted to do with Erois is take everything we'd learned from campaign one, um, especially when it came to things like mechanics, and add some new things into campaign two to help keep things a little bit more fresh and also address some of the balance concerns I have with Dungeons & Dragons 5th edition. The biggest custom rule that you're going to see in Erois is something called the Injury Table. One of my problems with Dungeons & Dragons 5th edition, and we saw this especially in high levels in Campaign 1, is that there really isn't much of a penalty for a character being reduced to zero hit points. High level fights can feel a little bit like a game of whack-a-mole. A player is not down to zero, a healer heals them up, a monster hits them, they go down, a healer heals them up, and so on and so forth and so forth. Because being healed and then getting taking your turn really just costs you half your movement, there's no reason for players to really heal anybody until they actually go down, except the risk of death saving throws. I wanted combat in Erois to feel a little bit more scary, to make sure that multiple encounters per day becomes a challenging thing. So after doing a bit of research, I have come up with my method, which may very well change over the course of the campaign. It does need to be fully play tested, and I can't do that until we start playing. But I've come up with my system, and it's actually based on a suggestion in the Dungeon Master's Guide, and that is the injury table. The injury table works like this. When a character is reduced to zero hit points, or suffers a critical hit, they need to make a constitution saving throw. The DC is either 10 or half the damage dealt, whichever is higher. On a failure, the character suffers an injury. They roll a d20 and then the result of that dice may result in a very minor, temporary or quite bad injury. If they roll extremely poorly, as in a natural one, they may suffer a grievous injury, which will be even harder to heal and will have even further consequences. This could get quite scary quite quickly, but it also puts an emphasis on clever use of tactics, of healing, making sure that players don't reduce to zero. Critical hits are obviously random, so we can't prepare for that, but the DC is low enough generally that it should be survivable in most cases. It's generally, unless a player has a very poor or very high constitution, it will pretty much be a 50-50 gamble. What are some of the results that players might get on that injury table, you're probably wondering? Well, if they roll particularly high, there aren't any consequences. A 17 to a 20 or an 18 to a 20, I can't remember exactly off the top of my head, uh, is just some cuts and bruises, nothing, nothing additional occurs. They simply are knocked down and it works completely as normal. Other injuries might include things like a sprained wrist or a sprained ankle as they fall to the ground in an awkward way. It could become more severe like an eye injury or a concussion. It could even come as bad as a broken leg, broken ribs, or perhaps uh, some internal bleeding. All of these things are potentials. Injuries will generally either go away after a short rest, go away at the end of a battle, or they will require more advanced healing. That advanced healing comes in the form of brand new spells. These new spells, called Heal Minor Injury or Heal Major Injury, will have a material cost. This means that it will cost gold for these injuries to be healed quickly. They'll be available as Cleric and Druid spells, so at least one member of the party will be, able to will be able to cast them, and they will basically allow them to do things like fix broken arms, uh, mend bleeding wounds, that sort of thing. There are also mundane ways of uh, dealing with those, but the recovery time will be much, much longer. 
We'll see how this goes. Some people might think that this is very harsh, that D&D is already quite punishing in terms of combat, but I like the added element of realism and the added element of danger it can bring. Suddenly, fighting a small, low-level, non-threatening encounter could turn deadly if a player ends up with a broken arm and they have to continue into a dungeon, or they don't have the time to go back to town to get it to heal. That means that they have to change their tactics for that next encounter and factor in the injury. I should probably mention, having multiple injuries increases your chances of a worse one coming up in the future. To give something a little bit back to the players, they will be able to acquire uh, new equipment uh, in the form of masterwork items and minor magical items. I'll be expanding the amount of magical items and upgrades they can buy for their equipment quite massively. Thanks to the production of things like Ethereum, players will be able to enhance their weapons. They might not be able to afford an enchanted plus one sword, but they can certainly be able to afford an Ethereum Alloy Sword, which is lighter and perhaps easier to hit with, but doesn't cause more damage. Or they might be able to recover some rare ingredients. A Wyvern's Hide, for example, might provide them poison or acid resistance if they craft some leather armor out of it. These sort of things. There is also going to be firearms in the form of Thunderstone weaponry. Thunderstone is a rare resource uh, that can be crafted. When struck, it emits a large concussive force, uh, which can be shaped and funneled, of course, uh, into certain ways, which can, pro which can project projectiles. Thunderstone weapons will work in a similar way to the firearm rules from Matthew Mercer's Gunslinger archetype. However, there will be some additional changes. These weapons are very unstable, and if triggered, can have consequences for those using them beyond just a simple jamming. Thunderstone weapons can also be used in creative ways, seeing with whatever the players can come up with. There will also be some additional custom classes and subclasses. If you've not seen it yet, the Vigilante is one I released on DM's Guild a little while ago and basically allows a player to play a fancy Batman or the Punisher or Electro or whoever, or Kill the Bride from Kill Bill, whichever you see fit. Um, it is a character all about the pursuit of vengeance. But there is also another one called the Arcane Chromat. The Arcane Chromat is a sorcerer subclass basically allows a sorcerer to draw magic and power from the colors around them. It's very inspired by Brent Weeks' Black Prison Trilogy, if you've ever read those. There is also a new domain for clerics called the Song Domain, which is all about uh, the majesty of song, uplifting allies, and providing a more of a kind of traditional support buff uh, role to the cleric. For those DMs who are interested, I will also be slightly changing the XP system. We won't be using the milestone system as I previously used in campaign one. Whilst I do prefer it, I want to experiment with something a little different. Erois is going to be a very sandbox campaign. Much of the exploration and what the players do and the narratives that they uncover is going to be down to the players. And as part of that, I want to reward them for exploring and finding treasure or improving themselves or the organizations that they decide to create. As such, there will be a hard experience system in place, but fighting monsters will not be the only way you earn experience, and in fact, they will only earn experience from fighting monsters that are a considerable challenge to them. Instead, they'll earn more experience from exploration, uncovering new places, from earning allies, from investing their gold into bettering, bettering themselves, as well as their own personal growth. The exact system is gonna be a little bit loose, so I won't be releasing it just yet. It will be a tweaked process as we go. There will likely be many, many more things that are uncovered in Erois as we play, but those are just some of the things I wanna talk about in this video. I hope that you're looking forward to Erois. We're very, very close to launch now. Don't forget that's on July 1st, twitch.tv forward slash yogscast or twitch.tv forward slash high rollers dnd uh, make sure you sub and like and all of that kind of good stuff to those channels this channel twitter make sure you follow the podcast all of that good stuff so you don't miss out that's july 1st 5 p.m bst or gmt check your time converters make sure you tune in to watch us live um, it's going to be very very exciting i am very much looking forward to it and i will see you all in erois